Another bumpy ride today on Wall Street. Today's wild Wednesday began with the market plunging more than 500 points. When it was all said and done, the Dow closed about 249 points down. NASDAQ Composite lost five points. The S&P 500 closed down 22. Falling oil prices are being blamed for the stock market slide. A barrel of crude is now trading at a 12-year low as supply is far outweighing demand. Simply put, it's Wall Street's worst ever start to a year. Yeah, so what does it mean for your 401k or your IRA and our state's economy? KKL9 political reporter Dave Bryan examines the widespread impact to your bottom line and shows us what money experts are saying tonight. Dave? What it means most uh, definitively is like the snow piling up in Washington, the losses are piling up in a lot of folks' 401ks. How long will it last? Where is this headed? And what's causing it? And how is it affecting me and my family? Lots of questions tonight, and we got some answers. But in most cases, there are many answers and big differences on the tough questions. It's a sad day on Wall Street when after a 200-point-plus loss on the Dow, there are cheers because it could have been a lot worse. And at least one market analyst, Peter Schiff, told me in a Skype interview from Puerto Rico that he believes the current market tumble, which he calls the Greater Recession, sequel to the recent Great Recession, was triggered by the Federal Reserve's disastrous monetary policies and will get a lot worse before it gets better. I think... This is going to be pretty bad. I mean, this is the payback for what the Federal Reserve did over the last seven years. As a result, Schiff, who's known in the industry as Dr. Doom, says 2016 could be a rough and tumble year for U.S. investors. So I think this greater recession probably began at the end of last year, and it's probably going to extend you know, beyond the 2016 election. But Eric Johnson, a managing director of wealth management with Morgan Stanley in Century City, disagrees with Schiff's greater recession scenario. Are we headed to another recession? We don't think so. No, we think what's going on, the headlines right now with the uh, turbulence in China, currency devaluation in China, and then the drop in the oil price, really these are not necessarily threats to the global economy in the sense that it could lead to recession. We don't think that's going to happen. We think they're really just factors that are going to rebalance global growth. In a report released last fall before the stock market retreat, the UCLA Anderson forecast concluded the implication for Los Angeles is that China's turmoil might reduce the growth of Los Angeles exports and tourism. But Chinese investment in Los Angeles real estate will persist due to better and safer expected returns in the U.S. Los Angeles' housing market, despite becoming more expensive and unaffordable is not in a bubble. Its housing prices are highly unlikely to bust this year or next. Tanking stock prices have increased concern that California jobs and housing markets could be affected. Last fall, the UCLA Anderson forecast predicted modest job growth, unemployment averaging 5.2 percent this year, and rising prices for housing. It's not clear now whether the stock market turbulence will change that. CBS News financial contributor Melody Hobson told Evening News anchor Scott Pelley that damage to most 401k retirement plans is not as staggering as the headlines would indicate. Seeing these headlines that say $1 trillion in stock market value lost, but let's put it in perspective. The typical person is exposed to the stock market through their 401k plan. The average 401k plan balance in this country is about $91,000. Two-thirds of it in stocks, one-third in bonds. That means, on average, the typical person has lost about $6,000 this year. That sounds a lot better than a trillion. And as for the Wall Street mood and how long this will last, CBS Money Watch reporter Jill Wagner said investors may have to get used to it. Most traders tell me that they don't think that the markets have bottomed out just yet, and it's really because of oil prices. They don't think we've seen the bottom yet for oil prices. Well, so at this point, unfortunately, traders say this could be the new normal, at least for a while, where we do see these triple digit losses and these wild swings for the market. Now, in the midst of all the tumbling stock prices, there is one brighter spot tonight. Stock markets in Asia, where it's Thursday afternoon now, have shown modest gains so far in Japan, Hong Kong, and even in China, where markets opened with losses but made up ground and are now showing small increases. Lena, Jeff? Yeah, Dave, a lot of uh, our viewers kind of holding their breath with the news, you know, the market's up and down oh, every single bet. day. Yeah. Is there any way to take an objective look at this as what is happening, you know, for the U.S. economy in a larger sense? 
you know, that's the big question, because that's ultimately what we're going to have to live with. There are some major economic reports coming out soon that will contain clues and give us an indication of how much of a bite this is taking out of the U.S. economy. On Friday, a report on the leading economic indicators comes out. Next week, there are reports on consumer confidence, new home sales, and the gross domestic product for the fourth quarter. They'll be posted. But remember that in all of these cases, the problem is some of these reports are for the end of last year before the stock market started tanking. So, Jeff, we'll find out a little bit, but it's going to take some time. Yeah, till then, don't look at your 401k. <laughs> Dave, thank you.